have heard me mention the other day in the R8 film. If you haven't watched that already, then please do go and watch that. But you may have heard me mention that there's two everyday usable cars that I would consider to be the ones, if you like. And I mentioned a Porsche Turbo S Cabriolet 992 guys, more or less brand new. And if you guys want to go to the end of this film to see what my verdict is going to be of this car, don't bother. I'll tell you now, this thing is, I honestly, I am so in love with this machine. <laughs> it is so capable. It's usable on an everyday basis. It's faster than any car needs to be. I mean, we're in second now. We're build the boost. <laughs> you know, at 2000, I think it's 2800 RPM. The the turbo's on song and you are absolutely flying. And the way it revs, it revs so quickly because this 3.7 litre turbocharged engine is, yeah, well, it's a masterpiece. The way it's so refined, it's, it's so supple. For UK roads, immediately what you do is you put it straight in soft mode and you just leave it at that. You can twizzle the little knob on the steering wheel from normal, sport, sport plus, sport plus. It's just, it's so unbelievably fast. I mean, not to 60 in 2.5 seconds. It's got 650 horsepower with 800 Newton meters of torque. I know a lot of people have already done videos on this car, but, and I thought, yeah, that can't be, can't be that fast. I've driven turbos in the past and they are, remarkably quick but this thing is as i say it's so so quick and it's exciting turbos of old have been sometimes people say that they're a bit too clinical and not fun enough this you forget it it's just oh, jesus <laughs> it's so quick that it is that it just makes it exciting. This one has the sports exhaust on it, which is an added extra, and that makes it sound almost like a GT2 RS, if I'm honest. And I've driven in the GT2 RS a couple of times. And I can honestly say, I think this car is probably as quick. I mean, the numbers are bigger in a GT2 RS, but the torque in this car and the way it pulls and the four wheel drive, it can send 350 odd Newton meters of torque to the front axle. So it's clawing along on the mechanical grip and the aero that it has. When you put it in Sport Plus, the wing extends at the back and it, as you can tell, I really like this car. I, oh, this has got a, this has suddenly got a place in the garage for me. And the fact that it's a convertible as well, you'll notice that I have the roof up. It is peeing with rain outside. And unfortunately, I can't take the roof off at the moment because we'll all get wet. But I did have the roof off the majority of the day yesterday, as you'll see in the film. It's just, it's made even better by having the roof off. I mean, I'm a little bit of a poser, so I quite enjoy the roof off thing. You get that noise, you get the fizzing and the popping and the banging and with the sports exhaust turned on and turned off. It even sounds good with the sports exhaust turned off. But my God, it is, a missile. It is so fast from A to B. It, the front end is absolutely glued to the tarmac. It's 45 mil wider than the previous. It's as wide as the back. You get no understeer. You get none of that old turbo patter when you go round a corner too hard. You don't go in slow and then explode out the corner. You can go in quick. You can stay quick and you can go out quick. To be able to put down the 650 horsepower and the 800 Newton meters of torque, you've got to have some pretty mighty rubber. And the Pirelli P0s on this, 315 sections on the rear, they're on 21s, you've got 20 inch on the front. They are remarkably capable and they feel, even in the, in the wet as well, they're, you know, some of these cars you get in them and you've got, you know, Pilot Sport Cups or something like that on a, on a GT3. And 
it gets damp and a bit wet and they become a little bit unruly. This, I mean, it just feels just as good in the wet as it does in the dry. I mean, obviously you've got to give it a little bit more respect in the wet, but down a gear. <laughs> oh, every time it has that same reaction every time you put your foot down. And it's so responsive. The steering is responsive. The four wheel steer is incredible. It makes the car feel short and direct. The ceramic brakes are wonderful. When they're cold, they're a bit dead at the top of the pedal, but when they warm up, they're absolutely brilliant. They are mighty and mega strong. They never fade. Oh, listen to it. It's an absolute masterpiece. I'm so impressed with it. And I thought, when I got in it yesterday, I thought I'll drive nice and gently. I drove up the M4 from Reading. I brought it all the way up to the Cotswolds and I'm now in the Mendips because it's a two day shoot, which is why the weather is disgusting today. But yesterday was absolutely beautiful. And I thought I'll drive it nice and gently. I got up to some nice roads. I put my foot down for the first time. Ah, oh, oh, oh. think a GT3 more exciting, but this is so much more usable on an everyday basis because the ride is so lovely, even Sport Plus that we're in now, it's not too bad on public roads. This is a good bit of road, and good road surface, so it's not too bad. I don't know where Porsche get all of their materials. It's everything in here feels super expensive. I mean, it should feel super expensive. This, as tested, this car is 178,000 pounds, but I'm sorry. It's worth it, it's worth every penny. For me, this, this is just better than everything else out there. The quality of the stitching, the knurling on the door handle, it's like a pistol grip. It's fantastically tactile and lovely. I think this car particularly as well has been specced beautifully. It's exactly how I'd spec one. The color is fantastic. The blue roof looks wonderful. It's so well put together. It feels like it would do 200,000 miles without going wrong. It sounds great. There's, there's nothing I don't like about it. There are certain cars you get in and you go, oh, no, I don't like that. I don't like this, I don't like the other. Little niggles. Oh, there's one thing. With the steering wheel, where it is, you can't, it cuts off half of the instrument cluster, which is a bit of a bugbear, but I don't really care because I'm not really looking at the instrument cluster. The only one that I can see is the rev counter in front of me. Big speeds that come. <laughs> but other than that, it's... No, it doesn't matter. You can't see the satellite navigation. I don't care. You can't see the clock. I don't care. I've got a watch on. The infotainment system works like a dream. A really impressive little extra that this car has is the adaptive lights or whatever they're called. They're automatic when they're on full beam, which they're on now. And I drove this car last night in the dark and <laughs> they cut the car out that's coming towards you and it follows them. And then, but the rest of the road is lit. It's very, very clever. I've driven it on S-Class Mercs and things like that before I've had them. But on this, it just worked so beautifully well. And no one flashed their lights to tell me to turn them down or anything like that. So you just leave the lights on auto and then you put them on full beam. And you just let it do it itself. We obviously have to talk about the subjective thing that is the looks of the car. Now, I love the look of it. I think this new one, I honestly, I think they've nailed it. I really do. The rear light on it, that when you turn it on at night, it's all the way across the back, it looks expensive and deep and just lovely. The wing on the back when you've got it in Sport Plus is enormous. It seems to have got a lot bigger than the old previous ones, but it's great and the interior is fantastic. The exterior, the width, the presence that this car has on the road. But you also, you look like a connoisseur because you are in potentially the best car that's on sale at the moment. So I think this one, in the blue, with the blue roof, I am absolutely, it's absolutely bob on. It's, I think it looks great. Love it. I really, really love it. And I've loved it since the second I got in it. It 
made me smile. And I have to say, that's something that the R8 didn't do. And I loved that R8, and I think it's a fantastic machine. I think it looks more like a supercar. But the way this drives, and the way this makes you feel, and the, how expensive this feels, I know it's subjective, and I know everyone will go, nah, but the R8's got the 5.2 litre V10, etc., etc. If you are going to go and buy an R8, or going to go and buy a brand new one anyway, if you are going to go and spend that sort of money, go and drive a turbo, turbo S, turbo, whatever, you will not be disappointed. Trust me, it is magnificent.